So when you're given the three sides, right, and you have to determine, watch out for some of the examples, though, that we'll, they'll throw in there. Determine whether it can even be the side lengths of a triangle. So if we look at those three numbers, do those numbers make sense for the length of the sides of a triangle? 10, 13, and 16. From the unit, last unit, it said when you add any two sides, right, it must be greater than the third. So 10 plus 13 is? Okay, 23 is bigger than 16. 13 and 16 is? The sum is 29, right, which is bigger than 10. And then last, 16 and 10 is the sum? 26, which is bigger than 13. Now, we, all, we know from a previous unit, too, that if it is a right triangle, then your c squared is going to be equal to a squared plus b squared. We know that. So what was new was how you use Pythagorean theorem to determine if it's a cube or obtuse. So if the c squared was less than a squared plus b squared, which type of triangle is it? Acute or obtuse? Acute. So the c squared is less than a squared plus b squared. Yeah, the triangle is acute. And if it's obtuse, that means the c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared. So I'm going to square the c. How do I know which one's the c? The longest one. So we square 16. 16 squared is? Correct me if I'm wrong, but is it 256? Yeah. So then is 256, plug that in for c squared across the board. 10 squared is 113 squared, 169. So then 100 plus 169 is 269. Well, we know, OK, it's not equal, so it's not right. So how does 256 compare to 269? Is it greater? No. Nope. Is it less? Yes, yeah. yeah, so the triangle is acute. So that was the reading. The other part of the reading was the triples. The triples, you don't have to memorize. Right? This is just so you don't have to do the Pythagorean theorem. But you can always do the Pythagorean theorem when you're given two sides of a right triangle and you need to know the third. Okay? But who's got it memorized? This triple is the what, four, five? Three. We'll go down. This triple is the six, eight, ten. It's a multiple of the three, four, five. Notice that this is three times two. 4 times 2, and then 5 times 2. So any multiple of the 3, 4, 5 will work. This triple is 5 what, 13? 12. 12. The number 6 below it is blank 24, 25, 7. And then the 8, 15, 17. So if you know those triples, if you have them memorized, and we'll keep repeating them, It'll just save you work to do, right? So if you can memorize the relationships, the triples, you just won't have to do the Pythagorean theorem. So it's not something you have to memorize, but you can. And then um, if we use Pythagorean theorem here, I showed you a way in your notes to avoid taking the plus or minus. So instead of setting it up as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I said that you can find the c by taking the square root of what? 3 squared what? Plus 3 squared. OK? 3 squared is 9. So then 9 plus 9 would be the square root of 18. So then when you reduce the square root of 18, and everything needs to be exact always, even though they did tell you to leave it in simplest radical form, unless they tell you to round. That's the only time you round. Largest perfect square factor of 18? So 9 times 2, so we get 3 radical 2. Now, if c is 3 radical 2, okay, 
that must mean it's a special right triangle, which again, you can memorize the relationships, but you don't have to, because we just use Pythagorean theorem. If this is isosceles, and we just got the three radical two for the hypotenuse, is it the 45, 45, 90, or the 30, 60, 90? 45, 45, 90. Over here, um, for a leg, using the Pythagorean theorem, and using my method of writing it in terms of the leg, that's equal to the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the leg squared. So 64 minus 16, what's that equal to? Square root of 48. Does anyone know the largest perfect square factor of 48? 8 and 6 are not perfect squares. 16 is a perfect square, 16 times 3. And then the square root of 16 is 4 radical 3. So this sign here is 4 radical 3. Whenever you see a relationship where you have one leg is 4, the other one in terms of 4 radical 3, and this is really 4 times 2, you see the 4 all the way through, then it's a 30, 60, 90. How do I know where the 30 degree angle is? It is the smaller angle, which has to be opposite the smaller side. 4 is shorter, or 4, the number, is smaller than 4 radical 3. So opposite the 4 is the 30, and then opposite the 4 radical 3 is the 60. Okay? On your, this is an SAT reference sheet. You don't take the SAT until next year. You can see what they give you, and they give you what I gave you on your notes. So what you could do for your quiz is put that as a brain dump, okay? If you can memorize one of the relationships where, say I knew this side was the x, could you just memorize that the hypotenuse is double? And then from there use Pythagorean theorem? Yeah. So as long as you can memorize one of the relationships, then you could always use Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. Another cool thing, too, is... Uh, your homework, not tonight, but the day three notes, you're going to start to learn about trig, which you watch that before your quiz. And with trig, you can always use trigonometry when you have two sides and an angle to find the third side. Okay, so you could use the trig at that point. But let me finish with these three examples in my recap. So, again, in each triangle, if we know one of the acute angles, we can find the other because they're complementary. And now we have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Well, let me show you where this comes from, okay? And that may help you. When we draw an equilateral, I'm going to say each side, I will use this example, number one. Let's say each side is 12. When I draw the altitude, what does the altitude do to the base in an equilateral? Cuts it in half, so this is 6, this is 6. It's also perpendicular. And we know that each angle is 60. And then when we bisect this 60, these are congruent, 30, 30. 30. That's where, so this right triangle here is actually this right triangle of the equilateral. So if it helps from this triangle, draw the equilateral, and now we know that this 6, right, is opposite the 30. So this is 6. And then from there, if you had to, use the Pythagorean theorem. So we've got um, 6 squared plus m squared equals 12 squared, so 36 equals 144. What's 144 minus 36? We have to borrow a 108. So then the square root of 108, ooh. Anyone know the largest perfect square factor of 108? Yeah, so this is 36 times 3, which reduces to? 6 radical 3, which is the relationship, if we go back to the SAT, here's your x, 2x, x radical 3. 
So you can memorize that or just memorize one relationship and then find the third. So if opposite the 30 is 5, what's the hypotenuse? 10. And then opposite the 60 is going to be whatever the other leg was, radical 3. But no worries if you couldn't memorize that, just now use the Pythagorean theorem. And then here, if opposite the 30 is 13 radical 3, what's the hypotenuse? What do you get when you double 13 radical 3? In terms of a radical, does anyone know? So we have two 13 radical 3s. 13 plus 13? 26 radical 3. And then from there, oh, is this too hard to do with the relationship or should we use Pythagorean theorem? The relationship? So what is the relationship? How do I find the 60 degree angle? So opposite the 30, right, is a 5. And then we're going to plug in the 5. So we take the 13 radical 3 and then multiply by radical 3 and you get 13 radical 9 which is 3 times 13 or 39.